Welcome to lesson four of the Swift UI to-do list app. We're gonna continue where we left off abstracting the header view and working on the register view. Before digging in, destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and let's get to it. So we learned that we can use uh, injected properties or rather configurable properties on our header view. That way we don't need to copy and paste all the hard work that we did in our login view for this beautiful looking header. Um, now that we've got that set up, we can jump back to register and we can indeed create a form for our actual registration. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a form here and inside of it, we are going to use a text field for the user's full name first and foremost. We're going to have a binding for it. So I'm going to say this is dollar name. We'll copy and paste this actually in just a moment. Let me say text field style and what I'm going to use here is our default text field style now that we've got this let's copy and paste it a total of three times and change the last one to be a secure field and just change all of the bindings and placeholders so this one here will be email address this one here will be password and I actually never explained it or mentioned it, but a secure field basically just uh, shows you asterisks when you type rather than the text itself. Now it's yelling at me because this binding does not exist or this state. So we're gonna change these and create these right up above. And we'll learn where we can abstract these to in a later video, perhaps this video, I haven't decided yet actually. So I'll make this one name email and password. And these are actually the data uh, properties to which SwiftUI will write the value to as the user types. So once I enter in my name, it'll actually go to the name state property up above. So let's give this a build and let's do a command shift P just to refresh our preview on the right hand side. We can actually also adjust this. I'm gonna hit this little icon and say, show me this in the dark mode color scheme. Alrighty, we're gonna offset this form by Y negative 50, similar to what we did in our login screen. And we also want a button here. Now, similar to what we did for our header view, it doesn't really make sense to start creating this button everywhere uh, with you know the Z stack and this rounded um, rectangle, so on and so forth. So what we can actually do is create a custom button and our custom button can actually go and do all this stuff for us such that we don't need to duplicate all the effort. So let me create a view to do exactly that. So let's hit Command N and we're gonna look for a Swift UI view and we're gonna call this a TL button, TL for to-do list. It's a common naming convention where you, um, you know, prefix the name of your views with your uh, app's abbreviated initials. So you can choose to call it whatever you'd like, but inside of here, I'm going to actually just paste in that button. Now, this view, similar to our header view, will take in a title and it'll take in a background color. So this title is what will show up on our button and this background title, rather background color, will be what our rounded rectangle does indeed show. Similar to our header, we want to pass in some values for our dummy data for our preview down here. Maybe we'll say this button is pink. All right, hit Command Shift P. We should see our preview, hopefully, once Xcode decides to get its life together. Awesome, there it is. And now that we've got this here, we can actually start using it. But there is a problem. Uh, that problem is the fact that we need to be able to pass in uh, via a closure what functionality should be called when this button is tapped, right? Like what action should occur? Let's change this to action here. The way we can do that is with a simple closure. So here I will say an action is a closure that takes no arguments, returning void. And inside of the button tab, we can say, hey, just call that action closure that we've got up above. Here it's yelling at me that we don't actually have an action. So we will fill that in. And just like so, we should be able to successfully build. Now let's jump back to our login view. And this is where we're gonna actually use that TL button. 
So let's do it. So let me make a TL button. All right, we're gonna create it with a title. We'll say the title is login. The color is going to be blue. And the action here will be attempt login. Now we could actually shorthand this and get rid of the word action, put the parenthesis there and get rid of this extra parenthesis at the end. So there is our reusable button. And this is what we're going to actually be leveraging in our register view in literally two seconds. Alrighty, just line broke it a little bit to make it a little neater. Now let me copy this and let's jump into our register view. So at the bottom of this form, we want a button with a background of um, green is what I'm looking for, not register. And we want our title of our button to say create account. And here we're gonna say attempt registration. Alrighty, so that looks pretty darn good. We want some padding on this button as well. Now, instead of sticking the padding in every single call site of this button, wouldn't it be great if our reusable component actually handled this for us? So we'll jump back to our TL button and add the padding on it itself, jumping back to registration. And hopefully we should have a smidge of padding on our register create account button, uh, which it looks like we do. Let me just double check by adding a little bit of padding on this and see if that makes a difference. It actually doesn't look like it does. Okay, it looks like it did that time, but let me let me actually remove it here because something looks a little a little fishy. So let's actually get rid of the padding here and let's see what that looks like back in our register. All right, I think that actually looks a little better. So instead of putting the padding on our TL button, let's just use it in the call site. So I take back the last uh, minute of my rant. Uh, in some cases, abstraction is not good, and there was a live example of me taking back and walking back a pattern. So definitely, these things are a little bespoke, so if you feel something looks better in one way over another, don't hesitate to change it. So cool, so we've got register looking pretty nifty. Let me give this a build and run in our simulator. Let's make sure that it does look nice. So I'm a new user around here, so I'll hit create account. I should be able to type it here, so I'll say, I am John Smith. My email is hello at iosacademy.io, and my password is password. So we can actually do a little bit of improvement on these fields. We probably don't want to capitalize the first letter of our email, so let's do all that. So for our uh, fields, let's add a couple of modifiers. So we're going to say auto capitalization, and here we're going to say none. We are also going to say auto correction disabled and let's do that for name as well. So we'll say auto correction disabled and back in our login view, similar for our email fields here, we are indeed going to say uh, auto capitalization will be none and that should hopefully make the usability and functionality a little better so it's not randomly capitalizing stuff. So cool, that is the register and login. Now, I have mentioned uh, over the past two or three videos that we are gonna eventually abstract this stuff into view models, and we have these view model files here. So let's actually do a brief example of this since it's gonna start to be used quite often in the upcoming videos. So a view model essentially abstracts all of the business logic-y data stuff that a screen or a view needs to function. So on the login screen here, we've got our email and password. So instead of holding all the data in here, which you can imagine can grow exponentially, rather what we'll do is we'll create an object that holds it for us. So let's jump into the login view view model. And we're gonna create a class in here with the same name as a file. So login view view model. We'll say this is an observable object, something that we can observe. We'll add an init on here. And we're gonna copy and paste those two states on here. And the difference is I'll change it to at published for both of them. Now, back inside our login view, we can delete these guys. And we can say we actually only hold on to a state object called view model. And it's going to be an instance of our new class called login view view model. 
Now you're going to get yelled at because this dollar email no longer exists here. Rather, what we want is dollar view model. So we'll say dollar view model dot email. Similarly here, we'll say dollar view model dot password. More or less, we just moved this email and password into this single class. And this is where we're going to have functionality. For example, we'll create a function in here called log in. Maybe we'll want a function in here to validate our actual email and password was indeed typed in and not just empty, things of that nature, right? So instead of putting all of this kind of functionality, business logic, if you will, in the view, we're going to put it on the view model. So the last thing I'll mention is I do have a habit of using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So if you ever see me closing this left panel, it's command zero. And if you ever see me closing and opening the bottom console window, this thing down here, where we have print statements, it's command shift Y and uh, command shift O for going to different files across your project. So I did wanna call that out once more since I do do it a lot and uh, it can get annoying if you don't know how I'm jumping around so much. So that is all I've got for this lesson. We covered a whole lot of stuff. And I will see you guys in the next part.